Loss of control in flight is the leading cause of accidents in many phases of flight, including descent and approach, takeoff and climb accidents, and landing accidents. And of course, the majority of accidents are loss of control on the ground when it comes to the landing phase. These statistics come to us via the AOPA Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association. This is just the 2022 calendar year accident statistics. And from this website, you can select any year and gather up all sorts of aviation accident analysis and statistics. And today we have two more classic loss of control accidents to discuss. The TBM 700 that went down on Saturday, 29 March in Minnesota in what is believed to be icing conditions. And just last Tuesday, a Cessna 310Q was lost while on approach to landing in Ohio. Let's check it out. One of the most common questions I get on this channel is, are we seeing more and more of these aircraft accidents? Well, no, you're seeing more and more of them on social media and we are raising awareness of these aircraft accidents and what to do to prevent them. And as a result, the overall general accident trend is trending ever so slightly downward. Starting at 2013, we got a total accident rate per 100,000 hours of 5.22 and Stopping here at 2022, we got it down to 4.3 accidents per 100,000 hours for general aviation. For fatal accident rate, we started back here at 2013 at 0.89, up to 0.98, and we're down to about 0.76 for 2021 and 0.68 fatal accidents per every 100,000 hours of flying time. Again, this is just for general aviation that aviation which occurs under FAR Part 91. On Saturday the 29th of March the TBM 700 November 721 Mike Bravo was lost while on final approach to Brooklyn Park Minnesota. Weather at the time of the accident was 10 miles visibility overcast at 900 feet temperature of 3 degrees Celsius dew point 2 degrees Celsius with several pyrips in the area for light rime icing particularly around three and 4,000 feet. The TBN crashed on approach to the Anoka County Blaine Airport. Video from the ground shows that one resident building was destroyed by fire. As a result of the crash, there were two occupants inside that building. They were able to safely escape the building. ADSB data indicates that the plane was on a stable approach to runway nine before the aircraft turned sharply to the left, lost altitude, and nosedived almost vertically into the residential building. Killed in the crash was the pilot owner the only person on board the aircraft at the time of the accident, Terry Dolan, age 63, a U.S. Bank Vice Chair Executive. The NTSB is investigating, and during the NTSB press briefing, you can already see the very snowy conditions occurring shortly after the crash. ADSB data from ADSB Exchange. Again, it appears to me that the aircraft was on autopilot, looking at the straight nature of this ADSB data. The airport that he was trying to reach is located right here. Here's the runway he was setting up on approach for, and he lost control of the aircraft back here, right prior to the river. And looking at these ground speeds, these are ground speeds. Let's take another look at those winds, surface winds. Winds out of the north and northeast, 030 at 10, gust 16 and a little later on 040 at 8 knots. Now the winds up at this altitude 3000 feet can be considerably different than those surface winds but nevertheless looking at these ground speeds it appears to me that this aircraft was being flown at much too slow of a approach speed especially given the pyreps for the icing conditions. If the pilot had been in icing for a for some amount of time even though the aircraft's got known icing equipment and can fly through icing conditions these speeds, to me, appear to be much too low to be flying this approach. Outside of the final approach fix, the TBM should be flown something more on the order of 110 to 120 knots, indicated airspeed. The TBM has published icing speeds, a separate set of speeds for icing conditions that recommends that at landing flaps, your final approach speed should be no lower than 90 knots. Again, because your stall speed increases if you have the wing contaminated by ice. Now, if you've got the autopilot on 
and the aircraft is beginning to ice up. Remember, the autopilot is retrimming the aircraft in an effort to maintain control of the aircraft. And if at one some point the autopilot can no longer handle the un, out of trim condition of the aircraft, the autopilot will suddenly kick off and you are stuck hand flying an aircraft, a crippled aircraft that is terribly out of trim. So it's vitally important that when you're flying in icing conditions that you turn the autopilot off so that you constantly have the awareness of where the trim state is of the aircraft and you will be able to physically feel the effects of the icing conditions on the airframe and won't have a sudden autopilot kicking off on you and handing you off an airframe in a completely untrimmed condition. We see this over and over loss of control every year especially in icing conditions and in these high performance single engine aircraft the ntsp will be looking very closely at uh, terry's background his currency of experience and um, his recency of experience in this aircraft as well Just last Tuesday, we lost his 310Q model. I heard through a friend of a friend that was taking a private pilot check ride that witnessed the accident ahead of him where the aircraft lost control while on approach to land at the local airport. There was only one person on board the aircraft, the pilot, who was fatally injured. The accident occurred in the Tuscarreras County area while on approach to the New Philadelphia Harry Cleaver Airport in Ohio. The aircraft involved was November 8242, Quebec. If we look at the ADSB data, it looks like the pilot was out doing some air work. A number of turns here at, oh, 4,000 feet or so, four to 5,000 feet. Left and right hand turns. The airport is located right here. It looks like the aircraft was on an approach and then knocked off the approach and did a sharp right turn to the right at a very low ground speed, 96 down to 68 knots, 66 knots, 62 knots. That's much too slow, even as a ground speed for the Cessna 310. I don't care if you've got one engine or two engines. If, if you had any kind of an engine problem, this would be much too slow. And the very last couple of data points show a ground speed of 68 and 67 knots. That will lead to loss of aircraft control. So the NTSB will go through the painstaking air effort of going through the wreckage to determine if there are any mechanical problems with these aircraft prior to flight. They'll be looking through the pilot's records, recency of experience and currency. But in the end, these two accidents are probably going to end up right here in the loss of control in flight while on approach to landing. The all too common cause of accidents here in general aviation. Now the NTSB has started the new 2025 National Pause for General Aviation Safety. And this page has got a lot of links to a lot of information and this is the only way we're going to be able to continue to drive this trend downward is through awareness. Awareness, if you're watching videos like this one right now and want to in, get involved in this general aviation national pause for safety with the AOPA, the idea of all these links and all this awareness is that as you get together in large groups, like we have a guerrilla ground school that meets every Wednesday, we've got a whole new young generation of pilots that are doing their own ground school program, putting it together themselves and just sharing information. This, these sort of links and this sort of information is a great a bunch of information that you can take to your group meeting and make a presentation out of. In our local flying association, the Golden Empire Flying Association, where we raise money for aviation scholarships for local youths, we have our monthly social hour, but we're adding a second uh, monthly program, the first Tuesday of each month, where we're gonna go over more technical aspects of flying and go over these accident reports and continue to maintain the awareness that is so desperately needed in the general aviation community of what it takes to help prevent these preventable accidents. Thanks so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.